Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities in Miniature. It is Friday, which means whether you're interested or not, I'm going to ramble on about Obscurities in Literature. Today's book, which hopefully we'll get some new eyes on it, is the book Dungeons and Drawings, an Illustrated Compendium of Creatures by Blanca Martinez de Rituerto and Joe Sparrow. So anyways, this book came to my attention just because of its unique take on all the various fantasy monsters that always seem to end up in, you know, the typical monster manual type books. And if you've listened to me ramble on here long enough or see most of the output that I've put together models of, you would probably know that I really do enjoy monsters in all their various shapes and sizes, and it's always nice to see some fresh takes on them. So without further ado, I really dig this book. Our table of contents, intro by the authors, and then we get into the fun stuff. It's not a fantasy book without going into your various elements, as well as your alignments. Yes, I know that's a thing that seems to be going the way of the dinosaurs, and I'm okay with that. Then we get into the characteristics of the creatures in the book. Outsiders being all the demons and angels and things like that. And then, what kind of monster manual would we be if we didn't have some kind of stats for everything involved here? I really dig that. Reminds me of the silly stats we used to make for up for imaginary games and monsters when we were kids. Combat, magic, smarts, loot, and danger. We'll start off with the uh, uh, Aquizotl. I can't say it today. Um, so you get all your stats on our monster here. The type the element, and the alignment, and then some interesting facts and adventurer tips on them as well. So, angels, I'm going to flip around the bache, bachie, I'm not even sure how to pronounce that, bad clowns, bajong, banshee, a bahoot, boot, onryo, onryo I know, bomb plants. Cave spirits, chimeras, good old cockatrice, the colossus. I'm flipping a long dragon, a good dragon, an evil dragon, a smoke demon, a ghoul, a ghost, fire bat. I like that, the Etten. Definitely some unique takes on traditional monsters. The Quetzalcoatl, the Feathered Serpent. We already saw you, Firebat. Storm Giant. Goblins. I like the Harpy. Gives off a very Gonagai Devilman vibe. The face and the chest. Maybe the McKenna from uh, Great Mazinga. Good old Hecatonkeries. And you better watch out for Hecatonkeries. Look at that. And he's got the fat loot. He's absolutely dangerous. Hypocampus. An elven hound. Hydra. Kelpie's kind of cool looking. Lightning spirit. A mummy. So again, I'm just flipping through. Now, this book is pretty decently sized. It's about 260-something pages. So, yeah, you do have quite a few entries here. A sea nymph. Tree nymph. Ogre. It's an interesting take. I dig the Oni, but I like Oni anyway, so that should come as no surprise. First, I thought these were extra eyes, and I realized later on they're all metal studs stuck in him. Parasitic Vine. Senmerv. Persian monster. Serpent folk. Cryosphinx. Spriggans. Oh, I skip one I like here. Let's find him. The Red Cap. I dig that art. It's quite cool. The eyeballs and fingers and things flying around there. I saw the Spriggan. 
Succubus is interesting. Tarask. It would almost be kind of cool if there was some explanation as to their thinking behind some of these designs. This is a timekeeper. I'm not exactly sure what that is. Titan Maw. The Vampire. I'm going to talk about the vampire. Some of the art here gives off a very specific vibe to me. The Were Shark. The Werewolf. The Worm That Walks. The Wyvern. And then in the back we have a nice... We got a zombie too. Index of further references for those of you who want to really dig out some interesting stuff. These are all books. Let me get into various types of media and even video games, which is actually kind of surprising. Shout out to Gloomhaven there. Sadly, there's no Kingdom Death. We did have Okami though. Okami was a great game. Divine Divinity. I have a lot of fun with that one. Shadows of Colossus. No surprise there. Pokemans! So yeah, we have a little thing about the authors. Um, I guess they met in art school in England, and what's interesting is our friend Joe Sparrow here, and not to knock Blanca Martinez de Rituerto's work, but it does specifically call out the fact that Joe Sparrow here spent time doing character designs for things like Adventure Time. And I think some of those monsters, especially, well, the Mimic, and things like that Red Cap and the Wyvern, I think really have a bit of that Adventure Time look to them. Oh, and a rock. I guess the red cap's right before here. Ah! Yeah. Fun stuff. Honestly, some of the work really reminds me of Andrew McLean's Headlopper comic. And I think I brought this one up before, but I absolutely love Headlopper. And I will recommend it to the ends of the earth. And I think that zombie really reminds me of the witch the blue witch in this but it's got some really nice art too very stylized a very unique look and it very much is some um, good old fantasy if you like the days of high adventure then you probably would enjoy headlopper but anyway back to dungeons and drawings honestly really cool book uh other than a few choice illustrations i think it's a cool way to uh, I don't want to say indoctrinate, but to get kids kind of interested in this stuff. Uh, I know if I had seen a book like this when I was a kid, I would have been all over it. But much like the authors, it was those early D&D monster manuals that probably turned me on to a lot of that stuff. More so than the game rules or anything else even. It's just the monsters, and it probably always has been the monsters for me. So yeah, it's only 20 bucks too, so dungeonsanddrawings.com I believe they actually mentioned that they started this as a blog, an art blog where they were showing off the illustrations and eventually that's what ended up turning into this book so cool little book um, I'm going to hold out hope that maybe someday we'll see a sequel, that'd be kind of cool because you can't have just one monster manual right? you always have to have multiples that's just how it works and then you get into the second and third editions, right? right, so yeah, definitely a cool book. And overall, the design is quite nice, too. It's a little on the compact side. I like that, but it is hardbound. It is sewn binding, and it has a nice little fancy ribbon bookmark attached as well, so you can find your best and most favoritest monsters at a moment's notice. With that said, this has been High Lord Tamerlane with Obscurities and Miniatures, saying thanks for watching, and we'll see you back here soon. Bye-bye.